Thanks for tuning in today as we discuss some of the best tips and practices for e-bike battery management, safety, and uh, a few key things that you guys should be aware of. So obviously there's a lot of fear, some skepticism, and just some unknowns when it comes to battery technology, mostly around the flammability of them. And uh, we talked to the folks at Shimano quite a bit before making this video and uh, really learned a lot about the battery partners they work with, uh, battery cell technology, and what's going on inside these things. The big takeaway is that they are quite safe. Um, you don't have that much to be afraid of. Statistically speaking, these things, they're pretty durable, they're pretty safe, and they're not gonna just ignite or catch on fire. When looking at battery and battery technology, not all products are the same. Obviously, there's everything from the, the really cheap, uh, kind of questionable stuff up to the super high-end stuff. There's a number of brands that have been using battery technology without many real hazards or safety issues for a long time. And that's one of the reasons that Shimano's partners either use a Shimano battery or a Shimano approved battery in their STEPS EP8 and E8000 systems. So some brands will just opt to buy a Shimano battery or will have to buy from an approved vendor if they want to say, um, you know, get custom sizes or different capacity batteries. For example, Norco. Um, they went with a, a third party that is approved by Shimano and they've got a number of sizes from 500 up to 909, whereas Shimano kind of has their set uh, sizes that they offer. Now with the Shimano batteries, they claim that you get about a thousand charge cycles out of the battery before its capacity drops to about 60%. Some of the other third party batteries can claim around 500 to 750 charge cycles, but something that's worth noting is that not all charge cycles are the same. What that means is if you are the type of rider that goes out regularly and only uses 15 to 30% of the battery and you go plug it in, that's not a complete or full charge cycle. What Shimano suggests is charging the bike regularly. If you go out, don't ride three, four rides and drain it down to 10% and then have to do a full charge because that deep discharge actually is taking a bigger toll on the battery cells than if you were to just do, you know, quick little plug-ins. Also, when the battery is uh, above that 60 to 70% range, you're in the slow charging cycle. Um, when it's deep down low, it does a fast charge to try to get it back up to power as quick as possible to get you on your way if needed. And obviously slow charging is less damaging to the battery as well. So um, plugging it in regularly is a good tip. So if you are out, just plug it in, keep the bike fully charged, you're ready to go. You don't have to worry about running out of range and you can essentially turn that thousand cycles into, I don't know, maybe 1500 to 1800 um, because you're not going all the way from zero up. All right, so obviously we have a lot of test bikes in our fleet that are constantly coming and going. And one of the things that we had a concern about was damaging the battery or fire hazard if we left the bikes or batteries charged or, or charging and plugged in for long periods of time. Uh, th that's not an issue. Shimano had assured us that it's okay to leave these bikes plugged in for a while. They've got a smart charger. They've got kind of some, some fail safes in there. So you can leave the bike plugged in. Obviously, if you're you know, going out of town and it's in a hot garage and you'll be gone for a couple weeks, it's probably worth unplugging it. Um, they also say, Charging these on a power strip is a good idea. That way you can just hit the switch off and on. You don't have to bend over into tight places and pull the thing out or undo it from the battery. So running a, a power strip could be a great idea and something that makes your life a lot easier, especially if you have multiple batteries hooked up. Now another question we had was related to temperatures and battery life. Obviously up here in the Pacific Northwest, we see a pretty big variance throughout the year from 
freezing temperatures in the winter to 110 degree days here in the high desert. You know, we wanted to know how big an effect those temperature swings would have on the range or the energy inside these batteries. And it is something that is notable. I mean, it's not a huge difference, but it is something that's there and worth considering. So if you live in Arizona, right, or you're in Los Angeles where it's regularly over 100 degrees, all right, so whether you've got the battery inside your frame or you've removed it for charging and you got power inside your van, it gets real hot in here. So just unplug this thing. Your inverter is probably going to overheat and get those fans cranking anyway. So unplug it, wait till you're back in the car. You got the AC going because it'll get real hot in here and you don't want to run any chances if you don't need to. Basically what, what the folks at Shimano said is think of it like your pet or your body. If you're happy, it's happy. Um, when you're charging a battery, there is heat and energy going in here, so it's getting warm. If you have it getting warm inside a 110 plus degree car, chances are you'll be fine, but it's a lot easier to just turn that inverter off or unplug the charger till you're back in the car and the AC is running. And then as far as cold temperatures go, much the same thing, right? If, if you're gonna be cold, the battery's gonna be cold and there will be a little bit of a sacrifice to the range and the energy stored. They said it wasn't a huge penalty. We actually asked about, you know, pulling down the, the battery cover and sliding some of those hand warmers inside to stay up against the battery. Kind of half joking, but half not. Um, it would obviously only heat the small parts of the battery that those were in contact with. Probably wouldn't do all that much, they said, but if you're going to be driving two hours, you know, to leave your icy cold destination and go ride somewhere else and your battery is not a huge pain to take out, it might be worth pulling it out to put in the car just to keep it warm and get you those couple extra miles. The difference that we're talking about is not huge. Um, I, I think something else that's worth noting is Chargers and batteries are designed to work together. If you lose a charger, don't go buy an aftermarket replacement or something that may or not be approved. There's a lot of technology and stuff that's going on inside these chargers that is helping control and distribute energy into these batteries. So you don't really wanna go out and, and save yourself a few bucks and, and buy something aftermarket that you know may not be approved with your product because you know, at the very least, you'll damage your equipment and save a few bucks, um, you know, maybe up front, but it could cost you a whole lot more in the long run. It's good to be safe. It's good to be cautious. If it's too hot, if it's too cold, you'll see a little bit of a difference. But the big thing is cold temperatures are going to eat a little bit of energy out of that battery. If it's really hot, don't leave these things charging, whether it's, you know, 100 degrees in a, in a shed where you've got these stored or 100 degrees inside your van. Just unplug it until it can cool off a little bit and you'll definitely feel a little bit more peace of mind and a little safer there. Aside from that, folks, you've got about a thousand charge cycles from, from empty up to being full and a lot more if you just are regularly topping off that battery. A, a thousand charge cycles, I mean, even if you rode every day, that's still quite a few years of riding before you have to worry about this battery. Not, not failing or dying, but going to 60% capacity. Hopefully that was helpful to you guys. Like I said, reach out with any questions. Please be sure to subscribe. We greatly appreciate it. And I uh, hope you guys have fun. Thanks for watching and we'll see you out on the trails.